Hi, my name is Peter Gagarin. I'm a software architect at uh, Eladium. And today I'll talk about our approach towards building a scalable machine learning backend with Apache Ignite, Python, and Jira. Let me talk a little bit about our project. The name of the project is Eladium Assistant, and it's built as a plugin uh, for Atlas and Jira uh, for making the routine project management tasks easier um, by relying on machine learning to infer uh, rules uh, based on existing set of uh, Jira issue stories tasks and uh, bug reports. Uh, the plan for today's talk is to uh, explain uh, why we chose Atlas and Jira as a base for our application then explain the design paradigms that we had in mind when we started working on this project, then compare uh, both legacy and current backend architectures, uh, talk uh, about the, um, their cons and pros, then uh, talk a little bit about um, our database migration tool, and finally compare three different alternatives for distributed um, machine learning, Python, Julia, and Apache Ignite built-in machine learning library. So why Jira? Uh, because it's very profitable for uh, plugin developers, as the license costs um, depend on number of all the users, not just users that use the plugin. And it's very popular. Um, thus, it gives uh, an access to wide um, set of uh, users around the globe. So the design paradigms that we had in mind um, as follows. We wanted to build our backend as a service based on microservice architecture. We wanted to use container orchestration. We wanted our backend to be cloud-based, fail-safe, and distributed. We wanted to to have a key, a key value database with SQL layer. Uh, we wanted multi-tenancy. Uh, we needed a background task manager to run machine learning tasks on a cluster. Uh, we needed an internal machine engine uh, provided as a service. And we wanted an option to deploy this on-premises in addition to the cloud, cloud deployment. Uh, when it comes to the database requirements, we wanted a distributed fault tolerant database with a first class uh, integration with Java. It, it, we wanted it to be highly available, horizontally scalable, uh, supporting distributed ACID transaction um, and providing both a persistent and in memory, in memory storages. And we wanted support. Um, for running SQL for distributed data sets. Uh, also, on top of that, uh, we wanted to, uh, an ability to run user-defined distributed jobs inside the database, if possible. Uh, we wanted uh, automatic failover, transparent data encryption, native integration with Kubernetes, and um, most importantly, we did not want to use any proprietary cloud-based product. Product. We just wanted to use an open source, open source solutions. Um, initially, we had a prototype. Um, this prototype was implemented uh, uh, partially in Java, partially in Python. We used Spring Boot as a web framework, what we call the database. Um, uh, hibernate as an ORM tool uh, and a combination of cellular rabbit and queue for distributed uh, task queue. And we relied on cyclic learn for uh, simple machine learning tasks. Uh, our current uh, technology stack uh, changed significantly. Uh, yes, we still use Spring Boot. But we replaced PostgreSQL with Apache Net distributed database without any ORM layer. We 
uh, switched uh, from salary and rabbit in view to a combination of Apache Ignite and Reserve for running distributed machine learning tasks. And in terms of machine learning the libraries, we started using PyTorch for uh, more sophisticated uh, deep learning tasks for natural language processing. Uh, here is a very high level overview of our current architecture. So on the right, we have uh, Jira users in red. Those users access uh, Jira Atlassian Jira Cloud. And those Jira instances in their return access uh, our infrastructure inside which we run a bunch of uh, different pods inside Kubernetes. Uh, there are pods that um, process machine learning tasks. There are middleware pods uh, running Spring Boot, uh, web servers. Uh, there are data nodes uh, in dark blue. And some of the machine learning tasks require GPUs. And in these cases, uh, we forward the request to Amazon SageMaker. Uh, now let us talk a little bit about our initial choice of database. Uh, it is it was PostgreSQL, and it has very many pros. It's easy to deploy. It's easy to integrate with Atlas and Connect Spring Boot, which is an extension of uh, Spring Boot designed for building uh, backends for Atlas and Jira plugins using in Java. Um, it's uh, very easy to track uh, schema changes. Uh, it has a very good support of this latest SQL standards and very good support for AC transactions. But PostgreSQL has a few uh, limitations for our use case. It's not horizontally scalable unless uh, we use some sort of PostgreSQL derivative database such as GreenPlum, Timescale, DPO, CitusDB. It does not support transparent data encryption. Um, out of the box, there is only uh, some unofficial patch available and not for the latest version of PostgreSQL. Uh, PostgreSQL does not support memory tables. This functionality can only be approximated. We are using RAM disks or unlocked tables, but this approximation uh, is just an approximation. It's not ideal uh, and it has limitations. And uh, PostgreSQL being a relational database uh, with SQL, uh, language support does not have a native uh, key value API. Uh, Apache Ignite is a database uh, works for our use case much better because it's a, a thick client API uh, for Java provides a very rich set of functionalities. Uh, there are two types of um, clients for Apache Ignite, thin and thick clients. Uh, thick clients are full-fledged uh, Apache Ignite nodes that run uh, inside the application itself, while uh, the thin clients are just thin wrappers around binary API, um, and those uh, thin clients provide only a subset of features. But in our case, it uh, was okay to use thin client API for Java. Uh, Apache Knight being, being a key value database uh, provides very good uh, support for key value uh, workloads, and, but it also has uh, support for SQL. It's distributed, uh, provides native persistence, uh, thus does not require some external layer for providing persistent functionality. It supports a distributed uh, transactions for a key value API, uh, provides built-in uh, transparent data encryption, uh, provides in-memory caches, uh, uh, has very good integration with Kubernetes, and um, for both thin and thick clients, um, there is an automatic uh, failover functionality available. 
but as usual, there are a few downsides. Um, at least to my, my knowledge, there are not any uh, open source schema version tracking tools and data migration tools. That is why we had to develop one by ourselves. And currently it's open sourced and available at via this URL. Um, also data by, database backup and restore can be difficult. <clears throat> you can read about this uh, following this uh, two links. Uh, still supports only a subset of SQL standard uh, 99. Uh, SQL transactions are still in beta. Uh, it does not play uh, nicely with Spring Boot Dev Tools, which is a very convenient way for developers to move rapidly uh, inside their integrated development environments. Uh, but there are workarounds that um, allow to solve that problem. It requires a very careful uh, network isolation when uh, being used um, on developer workstations located inside the um, inside the same uh, local network uh, this is because of automatic discovery automatic node discovery of Apache and to solve the problem we developed a simple python based tool uh, called uh, Arch Invoca as a ledger spe specifically for addressing this problem um, Apache Ignite provides a Python thin, thin client, but it does not have full support um, for transactions and uh, of computational grid APIs as well. Uh, and we still need to use Python because our machine learning um, pipeline is based on Python. And we uh, currently use uh, thick client API from Python, but it requires a special uh, integration layer uh, called uh, Py4G, which is Python Java bridge for calling uh, Python from Java and Java from Python. Uh, now let us uh, talk a little bit about uh, the data migration tool we developed. Uh, so the way it works is we are downloading data from um, existing Apache Knight cluster into an isolated file system directory in the form of other files. Then um, it allows to apply a set of transformations on top of those other files. And then modified other files can be uh, uploaded back to the new cluster. Uh, the way we usually um, do this, when we, we do this when we need to switch uh, to a new version of our product. And the new version usually has a different uh, database scheme. Uh, that is why we cannot just take data from the old version and put it in a new version. And in those cases, we use this tool. Um, the tool is open sourced under Apache license uh, two and available at this URL, as I mentioned before. Since all the data transformations are applied to other files, we do not require a live uh, Apache Net cluster. And uh, the tool can also be used for creating data backups um, that are pretty much Apache Ignite version independent with a few exceptions. Uh, we assume that um, query entity, cache configuration, affinity APIs uh, do not change. Uh, we only support a limited um, set of uh, field data types uh, 
uh, and they are limited uh, by only those that are available in query entity. Uh, cache keys can be of arbitrary uh, non-user defined Java types and affinity keys of such, meaning we can put any non-user defined Java types into affinity keys. Uh, source and target cluster topologies uh, do not matter. You can have uh, three nodes in a source cluster and five nodes in a destination clusters. And there are no any limitations uh, when it comes to uh, handling encrypted data. Uh, but source and target the cluster should be always should be always be should always be different because uh, we cannot do this transformation in place. Uh, transform class definitions should be available uh, on all the target cluster nodes. So we do not support uploading class definitions from the uh, tool itself to the cluster nodes. Uh, each uh, cache uh, needs to be configured with query entity. Uh, and those fields that are not uh, inside query entity definition just become uh, invisible to the tool. Thus, they are ignored and are not stored in other files. And in memory caches are backed up uh, in the same way as persistent, persistent uh, caches. Uh, now let us talk about the reasons uh, behind our decision uh, to switch from Celery to Apache Ignite. Uh, combined with Racer. So what was good about Seller is that it is Python-based. Thus, it's very easy and convenient to run machine learning pipelines that are Python-based inside Seller uh, workers. Uh, and uh, it, uh, Celery provides very strong delivery guarantees because uh, its delivery mechanism is based on RabbitMQ. But for our case, uh, the cons are, uh, it requires a separate message broker, that's a configuration, um, can be tricky. Uh, Celery can require separate uh, results backend in case the results are large. Uh, Java integration uh, is not ideal. There is no out of the box pure Java API. Uh, a special care is needed if we run Celery inside the Kubernetes cluster, and automatic connection failover is only available inside Kubernetes. Uh, if uh, we use Docker Compose, it needs to be done by hand. Uh, if we compare Celery to Apache Ignite as a computing grid, Apache Ignite has a few pros, uh, such as a native Java API for messages and distributed computing tasks, uh, built-in distributed um, machine learning models available out of the box, and automatic connection failover for both thin and thick uh, clients. Uh, but there are cons as well. Mm, in Apache Ignite, um, the delivery guarantees are weaker compared to uh, RabbitMQ. The built-in machine learning models uh, lack certain features that are important for our case. Python uh, thin client uh, doesn't support the full functionality that we need. And uh, to use the theme client, we need to use Py4G bridge. Uh, when we changed our 
technology stack by replacing PostgreSQL and Celery with Apache Ignite and Reserve, we consider it um, switching from Python to Julia um, or Apache Ignite machine learning for driving the machine learning workloads. Uh, and here, here are the comparison results between Apache Ignite built-in machine learning, uh, um, a Julia machine learning toolbox called MLJ, and Scikit-learn. For uh, the comparison is done in terms of performance um, uh, of running simple classical machine learning tasks such as linear regression and decision trees. As you can see, uh, the performance of Apache Ignite machine learning uh, is not great, but the reason for that is that we use um, only, um, uh, we use very small data sets uh, that are very typical for our use case, uh, but not very typical um, in terms of what Apache Ignite uh, machine learning framework was designed for. Uh, if we compare Python and MLJ, uh, then we see that um, uh, Python uh, uh, for linear regression is faster than Julia and uh, when decision tree algorithm is used, it's almost as fast as Julia. So I would say that on average, Python seems faster for our workloads. Uh, then when it comes to Apache Ignite machine learning, um, it has a few limitations, not just in terms of speed, but also in terms of features. Uh, uh, it has a very limited set of optimization solvers and does not have support for nested cross-validation, certified uh, cross-validation. And if you are there, uh, advanced features are missing. Um, mm, to, to summarize, uh, Python is better than Julia mm, when it comes to uh, communicating uh, from Python with Apache Ignite. Uh, there is a thin client in Python so with a limited feature, but still it exists as there is no such client for Julia. Uh, in Python, there is a very useful framework that we use called Eraser. Uh, that is based on Rave uh, project. Uh, and there is no direct alternative to that in uh, Julia. Uh, a combination of Genie, which is analogous to Spring Boot in Java, and Dagger for running um, um, direct acyclic graphs uh, pipelines. It's just an approximation for what Racer can provide, but it's not a direct cool. Uh, Python has a much more mature machine learning ecosystem compared to Julia and scikit-learn, which is Python-based framework, is usually, usually faster than MLG. Um, and where Python uh, is as good as Julia, um, it's when we talk about uh, calling Apache Ignite thick lines. Uh, uh, Java API and Apache Ignite thick client C++ API. So in, uh, in Python, we would use Py4G and in Julia, we would use Java call.gl. Uh, for calling C++ thick client API, in Python, we would use Cytan and in Julia, we would use cxxrack.gl. Uh, but Julia has a strong sites as well, much more flexible because you can program in uh, pure Julia a very performant code, while in Python you uh, have to write your libraries using other fast performant uh, languages such as 
C, C++, Cyton, and others. And it provides very good um, and convenient uh, parallelism um, functionality uh, directly from Julia. Uh, while in Python, you have a global interpreter lock that uh, prevents you from using um, all threads of your CPU uh, efficiently. Of course, unless you run many processes. Mm. When we started the migration from PostgreSQL to Apache Knight, we faced a few uh, difficulties. Uh, firstly, uh, support uh, for Apache Knight and Atlas and Connect Spring Boot framework, which, which is an extension of um, a Spring Boot, uh, was not ideal. So we had to take a special care of uh, creating Atlas and host tables, special table where uh, all Atlas and Jira clients are registered. We needed to create this ta table ahead of time prior uh, to letting Atlas and Connect Spring Boot uh, uh, run. And certain fields uh, having uh, non-SQL data types uh, needed to be stored as XML so that those fields can be uh, viewed easily in such tools as DB Beaver and DataGrip, basically, uh, for easier debugging. And um, it's still not possible to get a list of all atomics, uh, atomic names inside uh, Apache Knight cluster, and this was a problem when we used our data migration tool to make database backups. Mm. In terms of migration difficulties from a combination of Celery plus RabbitMQ to Apache Knight, mm. uh, we still need a place to run machine learning tasks, and since we cannot rely on Apache Ignite machine learning framework available out of the box because of the limitation I mentioned before. Uh, we decided to use Racer in addition to Apache Ignite. And uh, the Vika delivery guarantees in Apache Ignite computational grid um, resulted in the need to take a special care on the front end side. Uh, here is a here is a deeper look at uh, our current architecture. So uh, here uh, in the blue area, we have a few uh, machine learning jobs that run inside Apache Net computational grid, and uh, each job uh, forwards its machine learning. Uh, workload to uh, REST API endpoint inside uh, Racer. Uh, then, depending on what kind of load that is, it's either forwarded to scikit-learn library or uh, to a deep learning container that runs inside uh, Amazon SageMaker. That's because the classical machine learning does not require uh, GPU, thus it can run directly here on CPU, but deep learning tasks, uh, a special training uh, of uh, deep learning models require GPU, thus this uh, type of workload needs to be forwarded to a deep learning container. Um, here at the end of the presentation, I list all the references to uh, various useful uh, internet resources, articles, and presentations. And I reference all these uh, from different slides. So feel free to um, read some of these. So now questions, please. 